Howdy everyone on YouTube, my name is Dustin Dolby. Thank you so much for joining my channel Workflow. Make sure to subscribe. Today we're gonna to shoot with LED lights, so continuous lighting, which is a little out of my comfort zone, I have to admit. Here's what we just built up a moment ago, and what a simple image. It's a silky head-on image, but there's a lot to focus on here and build up with the live feedback of the LEDs, like that clean volume that kind of characterizes the bottom of the bottle. I really wanna focus on that. And just getting this whole canvas in camera, this is a total organic set. Bit of shadow falling off in the back, which gives us a wee bit of dimension. And it just came into focus there, so how are y'all doing? We're gonna use two LED lights, and this is a really cheap, simple one, which is just a little orange filter, and these are lying around everywhere. And in combination with that, we'll use a Yongnuo 600L, which is my choice of light for video production. And it's really good, but I've never used it for photography before. So I have it hiding behind some Savage Translum plastic, which will hopefully diffuse the background, giving us a nice radial glow that you just saw there in the image, and it'll soften things up for us nicely. So let's just build this up light by light, give you some feedback along the way. Why don't you thumb up the video? I really would appreciate that. And let's dive in. Okay, let's start with one light just to keep it really simple. So I'm just turning the power up here a little bit, maybe a little too much. And we have a really simple light stand that's just holding that plastic. And it's actually quite a lightweight light stand. So we'll see how it works with such weight. There's a lot of ambience in the room and we have a pretty slow exposure here to let that light bake into the sensor. So in a perfect world, you'd probably black out your room or if you're a hobbyist, like come back at night and take your photograph. Now I wanted a little bit of light coming out of here just to light my face for the video. So I just fought it with a simple black flag that I placed here just to block those nasty highlights off the front of the clone. Actually, why don't I start just by removing this? And it's pretty subtle, but on the cap particularly, you'll see that highlight get reintroduced and suffocated once we bring that in. And that's a beautiful solution to get a nice, clean, ambient frame. Speaking of clean, let me get rid of a bit of dust there. Let's fire off a quick exposure, and we'll see how that's driving. Okay, so this is actually our black card showing up here in the corner, so we'll make a really subtle adjustment. We can still block all the light coming from the windows and not get that highlight just by rotating this out a bit more of an angle. Nice. So that's a bit of a difference there. I actually really like the gradients falling off in the back in the clone. It gives it some nice volume. And that's caused primarily by our diffusion material, allowing that Yongnuo 600 LED light to sort of fall off gradually, give us that nice volume. And that comes down to where you're bringing your background in Z space, or pardon me, Z space, I'm Canadian. But if you bring this too close, it'll creep onto the side of your bottle. But if you bring it too far away, you won't fulfill that beautiful refraction that's happening. So that's just something to keep in mind. There's a little bit of tweaking involved with that. Why don't we turn our power right up to the max here, just to contrast, and we'll take another super clean exposure. Nice, this is really clean. I like to look for particular things, like the right side of these sort of beveled designs. It looks really beautiful and simple here, and I think that could do well maybe with a flip. And the volume looks pretty clean. The lines are looking straight and there's not much ambience affecting this shot. So this will serve us as a really strong base exposure. We could use it to repair things later in post, but still, even if you're not compositing, it serves as a good test to make sure your one light is super clean, super simple, before you complexify things with a second LED light, which is what we'll do right now. So I have a kind of an idea of what I wanna do with this light. I'm thinking like a centered light. And let me just take a quick test shot. And that looks a little dark and asymmetrical, but I like how shadow falls towards the edge. Keep in mind we're on a bright background, so hopefully that'll really cut this off the background and give us some character. Now, I should mention, I'm going to try to do this in camera, but if you wanted to composite, you could turn your backlight off, which would make this pretty much a light mode machine. Now, I don't want to do that. I want to get it right in camera, but there's a lot of flexibility and options if you are comfortable with blending modes. But stay tuned. I'll include my post-production work at the end. So why don't we just turn this sideways to get a bit of a wider light? Something like that. And you know what, I'll just take a ton of options because something will look more symmetrical when we look at it in post-production. Nice, and most of those exposures look fairly clean. There's a little bit of fraying going on at the top among a few of them, and that's kind of the backlight as well. But keep in mind, we can always take a clean exposure and combine that with it up at the top there, just to make sure that's a nice clean line. Little details like the little bevel in here are gonna really look beautiful 
in certain exposures. And some of that comes down to chance. It's such a micro thing. But we'll just zoom into the bevel and make sure it looks really beautiful and starkly dramatic, kind of like it does in this exposure. So the label caught some light here. I should point out, let's take a blank exposure. The blank exposure looks a little stronger in my opinion in terms of the label. Don't always fall into the trap of thinking you have to brighten your label. You can think outside of the box and draw emphasis to your label in creative other ways and using other devices like contrast for instance. But having said that, I will get a few exposures of the label just to be safe and give us some bright detail in case we change our mind in post. And there's no recycle time on that LED, so you can just go buck wild. Okay, and we got some good options in there. So the bottle's looking pretty nice. We have some good options for the label as well as the cap. There's probably an exposure in there that would even satisfy a one exposure option if that was our total goal. But overall, I think we'll have a pretty easy time in post-production where we'll clean up a bit of those lines and make things look its best. And we'll do that right now. Okay, so it's a super clean, really simple approach to the post-production workflow. We're just gonna polish up this cologne a little bit and make it stand up to scrutiny a bit better. If you like this tutorial, consider slapping that like button. It circulates our videos around the internets and I seriously appreciate it, guys, thank you. So I'm gonna duplicate this layer because we're gonna retouch a few things. We're gonna tackle this in four steps. So the first step is little cosmetic blemishes, things like this highlight, you know, little things that detract the uh, viewer's attention away from you know, the intrinsic beauty that's just lying in this bottle naturally. So, this highlight, that's easy work for the patch tool. I love the patch tool. Just resample something and figures out a lot of the tricky stuff for you. Like even a large thing, like this seam, which flew under my radar. I didn't see it when I was shooting. And a pretty sloppy selection. And look at the patch tool. We'll just eat that right up. Then we can turn that on and off to see the difference. And, oh, that's clean as a whistle. I really like that. So that's the first step, little cosmetic fixes. Now this bubble, I don't know if I need to get rid of it. I think I'll leave it in the final version. It's kind of fun. But if I were to get rid of it, I'd probably make a pretty big patch. I don't often micro patch things. If there's really repeatable lines going on, I just resample it and make sure to align those elements. And you see there's a color discrepancy, but the patch tool just chews right through that. It's a monster. Love the patch tool. So that's the first step, little cosmetic blemishes. Secondly, I want to repair larger areas in the image, like the asymmetry here. That was a premeditated decision because we liked this side. And, you know, really wild shapes can be pretty tricky to figure out where low lights or reflections are coming from, unlike simple shapes like a simpler bottle. So, you know, there's a purist approach where you don't do this in post-production, but I really want to make the case for the post-production solution here because it'll take like 30 seconds. So what I'm going to do is grab the marquee tool, and I'm going to grab the side I like, which is this side. And did I mention I have 30 pixels of feather? I hit Control J, and that just duplicates it to its own layer. And that feather will help it blend in nicely. Control T, right click and flip horizontal, and we're halfway there. So I'll turn these layers back on, and it looks really crude, like a sloppy solution, but the moment you bring it over, it just sort of clicks in the brain. And I mean, hey, you know, you can be a purist all day long, but that's, you can't deny how easy that solution is. You now you can obviously zoom in and make it a little more flush something like that and I think it goes without saying you want to make sure your item is straight before you duplicate and flip things because you know you could run into issues if you're not flipping or along you know the same plane vertically just gonna do a little patch for some ghosting there and you can probably micro tweak that a bit more but that's a pretty darn quick solution so step one was little cosmetic blemishes step two was repatching larger areas in the image step three is gonna be fixing textures and making them look their best now I got to give credit where credits due. Savage Transum did a great job of diffusing this. It looks really smooth, really milky. And I might apply a little blur to that, but it's looking pretty darn good. Now down here, it's looking a little haggard. And that has a bit to do with saturation. But regardless, let me show you how I'd fix discrepancies in textures or gradients. I'm going to group everything. Control G, Control J to duplicate it. Control E to merge it. And you know what? I'm not going to name these. I'm going to leave it nice and sloppy over here. So now we have the group saved, but we have a layer, sort of a layer visible copy that we can edit. I'm going to duplicate that again, and what I'll do is apply a blur. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And how blurry does this need to be? Well, that's kind of subjective. It depends how bad your gradients are. So I'm going to, I mean, my cranes were pretty bad, so I'm going to crank this up. No, I'm joking. It just kind of happened naturally, but this is a great solution to smooth things out. I can hold Alt while I click this mask button to give it a black mask, which omits it from showing up. I'll hit B to bring up my brush tool. 
hit X to switch these two colors to bring white as my foreground. And with a white brush, I'll just brush away all our problems. Look at this. Now, you could mask out this, but honestly, it's not even that big of a deal. It just really smooths out the textures and the gradients. And that's great. You can always hit X to bring out black and omit the effect if you bled into the edge, because you have to keep in mind this is really subject to looking terrible if you mess up. So, But as long as you stay within the parameters, this is an absolute powerhouse for just smoothing out textures. Boy, I really love that. And, you know, in real life, that's how the bottle looks. It naturally glows. And obviously, you'd want to, you know, do the same thing on the bottom. I'll just take a second to do it horribly. But, you know, you'd want to do that whenever there's a reflection. Naturally, you want to sort of clone everything you're doing to the reflection. But I'll just stick with the base image. You guys are clever. You, you got to fix the reflection. So, cosmetic blemishes, larger edits, texture smoothing. What's the fourth step? The image looks, uh, what's the word? Not overexposed, but a little like frayed up here at the top. Maybe I should have brought in a black card to salvage that edge, but I might darken it slightly just in one area. So I'm going to darken this with a curves layer and I will invert that curves layer. I'll bring in a white brush and this is going to look too dark for the time being, but I'm just going to darken the cap, but I really only want this effect to be more prominent near the top. So what I'm going to do is hold alt and click my mask to visualize it. Hit G to bring up my gradient and I'm going to do a simple black to transparent gradient from the bottom here just so the effect is potent at the top and it's kind of weaker at the bottom that's really nice one last step i might want to do is get this on more of a pure tone on the bottom right now the reflection extends all the way so i'll make a new layer above all this jazz and i'll just sample a color so we can bring out a simple gradient and let me show you how i approach gradients on the bottom because some people would just do that to make the reflection fade away but what i like to do is do a small gradient at the bottom just to ensure I'm on the tone fully. And then I'll make a new layer. And now I'll sort of aesthetically craft it a bit more because now I don't have to worry about the perimeter not being on this tone. I know the perimeter's there, so I can have fun duplicating this and you know adjusting these levels to where I want it to be. Very nice. So here's the final version I threw together. Let's do a little zoom in to appreciate those clean textures. And this is nothing special. It's a really simple tutorial, but I thought this bottle lended itself well to a lot of the techniques we touched on with the texture blurring we see here at the bottom, the symmetrization of the sides, and just cleaning out the image generally. It was pretty simple. And as I said before, the direction of the LEDs motivated us a lot to make some of those decisions. So thank you so much for watching our channel workflow. Make sure to subscribe if you're new here. Like I said, you can hit the like button if you're feeling friendly. And I'll see you next week here on Workflow. Have a great week. Ciao.